Hey everyone, welcome back to another ASM Track Tips. My name is Tom O'Gorman. I'm not Andy Smedegard, but we're here to show you Mid Ohio Sports Car Course. It's in Lexington, Ohio. It is 2.2 to 2.4 miles long, depending on the layout you're running. We're going to take you through both of those layouts and show you some tips and tricks on how to get around this track as quickly as possible. It's one of those old school driver's tracks. There's a lot of technical corners, a lot of corners that link together. So you gotta be really on top of the car as you're lapping through, especially the back half of the track, but also some key corners that lead onto long straightaways that really make your lap time. So here's an aerial map of Mid Ohio Sports Car Course. It's uh, 13 corners or a couple more than that, depending on how you count them, but we'll go through both the pro layout and the club layout uh, with this track map. So starting at the start finish line here, uh, up the front straightaway, which is among the shorter straightaways here at Mid-Ohio. You have the car all the way on the right side of the track, and we're starting with the fastest corner on the entire circuit. It's almost a 90 mile an hour minimum speed corner, very, very fast, and also blind because of a bridge right over the entry of the corner that leads to the infield. Luckily, that bridge is also a great reference point for us, so we'll have the car on the right side of the track, and just before the bridge starts, right about the corner worker station that's here on your right, that's a good turn-in point. On your way into turn one, you really want to brake as little as possible. If you can brake for a longer duration and a very light pressure, that keeps the car more balanced and allows you to have more confidence rolling that speed into turn one, rather than charging into the corner and braking hard. So roll that speed in, and there's a couple spots on Mid-Ohio that have uh, what feel like very early apexes. We'll go through those as we get to them, but turn one is the first. Here at pit in is separated, or pit out I should say, is separated by a curb that starts right about here. You can see that's geometrically about in the center of the corner, but it feels like a really early apex. You want to apex right when that curve starts, and then at that point you can let the car track out as early as it needs to to maintain that momentum. So we're going for a nice light brake pressure, gentle turn in, a pretty early apex right where this curve starts on your left, and then track out. Now there's quite a bit of terrain, a little bit of elevation change that uh, rises up through the exit of turn one. The quicker you track out, the more that terrain kind of catches the car and keeps you from going off track at the exit of turn one. So don't feel, uh, don't feel compelled to stay super tight to that curb on the way through turn one. You can let the car track out using momentum and get all the way to the curb on that exit. So from the exit of turn one, we have two layouts. We have the pro course highlighted here in black and then the club course, which uses this uh, chicane, which is where the keyhole gets its name from. So we'll go through the pro course first, and this is one of the longer straightaways on the track, so getting a good exit from turn one is really important. Getting that run, which is fairly uphill towards the keyhole, using the brake markers on your left here uh, to establish a good braking point. And because it's uphill, you can brake a little later than you might think. Uh, but the keyhole is almost a double apex corner. So as soon as you go to the brakes here with the car all the way on the left side of the track, you wanna angle yourself towards this curb right where it starts here at the keyhole. You're gonna almost drive past it though, and then let the car track out maybe a half to a full car width from uh, the inside curb, and then tuck back in for a late apex, allowing yourself to get on power nice and early through the middle of the corner and lead onto that long back straightaway. Now on the club course, things get a little trickier. You have to get the car back to the left quicker, and you should be able to power through the first right-hand portion of the chicane, all the way past this curb that's gonna be on your right. Higher power car, you might have to start to back off the throttle just a little bit, but you don't wanna brake until you get the car straight, and you have a very short straight braking opportunity here before you chuck the car through the left-hand portion of this corner and then let the car track all the way to the right for, again, essentially a double apex through the keyhole. So once you've floated that speed through, you're on the inside of the corner, you can apex here, let the car track out maybe a half to a full car width, and then tuck in for that late apex once again. So now we're on the longest straight of the track, the back straight, which is not entirely straight, but it is flat out in absolutely everything. You want to cut a little bit of distance out of it if you can, so I try to apex right where this access road comes on, maybe kick up a little grass as you cross through turn three, and then let the car get back out to the left for our braking down into the S's. Now at the end of the back straightaway is also our heaviest braking zone coming into the S's, uh, which is turns four, five, six, seven into uh, Thunder Valley, but all the way back at the braking zone here. Most cars can get down to the three board. Some cars you have to back up to the four or five, but you want to have that car all the way on the left side of the track. And the goal for turn four is to treat it almost like part of the back straightaway. Get through it as quick as you possibly can and let the car carry its momentum all the way out to the left side of the track at the exit of turn four. So once you've done your turn in, make sure you stay off the curb here on the inside of turn four. Sometimes you can hit it, but it will upset the car quite a bit. I like to just tuck up right next to it and float the car all the way out to the grass on the left side of the track. The perfect line is probably maybe a half a car width off of the grass from the left, but the priority here is keeping your speed up through turn four. 
Now you're all the way on the left side of the track and as the wheel straightens up, you have a quick braking opportunity to get the car slowed for turn five. And turn five, or madness, is where we just wanna cut distance. There's nowhere to go with any of this speed, you're just trying to get through it, so keep the car on the left side. We're gonna uh, cut that distance through the entry of the corner, up this hill, and then right about here is a crest where you can start to let the car track out. When you track out of turn five, you don't wanna go more than about mid-track, maybe a little bit past mid-track to the right side because you have to hustle the car back to the left for turn six. So if you're tracking all the way out to this exit curbing at turn five, you're using way too much space and adding way too much drama to this little straightaway. Now coming down the hill off of turn five, we have the car all the way back to the left side for turn six. And this is a really critical section because even though it doesn't look like it, this is one of the longer flat out runs for uh, the track. We're gonna be flat out from turn six all the way to the brakes for turn eight. So you really wanna maximize your exit of turn six. Uh, there's no great reference points for where to turn in or brake, but as the wheel is straight, you just go a quick dab of the brakes and throw the car into turn six, using the sealer through the corner as kind of a reference point to keep your right sides of the car right on that right side of the sealer. Now in a lower car, you wanna get to power back as early as possible. You can let the car track all the way out to the left side curbing, and you should be able to stay flat up under the Honda bridge and over the crest towards turn eight, no matter how fast your car is. If it's a little bit lower speed, S2000s, Miatas, older BMWs, uh, Civics, et cetera, can go flat out no matter where you track out at turn six. You just gotta be a little bit quick with, the, uh, with your hands. Now a higher powered car, you wanna set up for a little bit more of a late apex. You'll set up a little bit further to the right, and then straighten out turn seven so that you can stay flat out again. But the key there is making sure that you can get on power around the apex of turn six and stay on power all the way to turn nine. Now we're coming under the Honda Bridge. It's a little bit uphill and very blind. And the key here is you wanna draw a straight line from your uh, curb on the left at turn seven to the curb on the right at turn eight. You're gonna to have to feel out that flow and the space that you have available there. There's no great reference point at all, but as long as you can kind of come straight over the crest between turn seven and eight, you'll have plenty of time to realize where you are, kind of apex turn eight a little bit. And then we get into what is essentially a decreasing radius corner that ends us up into turn number nine. So before we move on to Thunder Valley in the last couple corners, the last thing about the S's, turns four, five, six, seven, and eight, that the biggest mistake people make is just not having fast enough hands. Because you're transitioning from corner to corner between each of these S's, you wanna have really quick hands and use the weight transfer to your advantage to throw the car back and forth and be efficient between each of these corners rather than slow hands. So you wanna have smooth feet but fast, fast hands through all of these sections. Uh, and you'll see in our in-car video what I mean by that. Now back at turn one, I mentioned that what feels like an early apex, turn nine is very similar. We're gonna early apex right where the curb starts when we get to this point here on the way into turn nine. So uh, the ideal is to kind of set your steering and use the brakes to slow the car down and get tucked into that early apex at turn nine. You shouldn't have to turn this into multiple corners. Once you get up to speed, the momentum will kind of carry you through nice and smooth. Now we're apexing at turn nine and there really isn't any amount of curbing on the inside here that's too much. You wanna use all the curbing and more even if you can uh, to get the car hooked around turn nine, up a little bit of a hill, that'll help catch the car, and then over a big crest. You wanna have your hands mostly straight by the time you crest this corner, using momentum to track you all the way out to the left. Now, if you need a reference point, there are some trees off on the, uh, on the left side here. If you kinda aim the nose of the car off to the trees and have your nose straight over the, uh, over the crest aimed at those trees, you should end up in pretty much the right spot. Moving on to Thunder Valley, another one of the longer straightaways on the track, but it is setting up to one of the more intimidating corners here at turn 11. So you'll, uh, you'll be on the left side of the track coming out of turn nine, probably grabbing a gear up under another one of these bridges, but get the car over to the right uh, where this red guardrail starts along here. You're basically gonna try to scrape your passenger mirror right up against that wall uh, on the right side of the track at turn 11. Now turn 11 and turn one are very similar corners actually. They're within maybe two or three miles an hour of minimum speed to each other. But turn 11, because it has a bent entry and is a little bit more blind than turn one, is more intimidating to carry that speed in. So whatever helps you carry your speed through turn one with a light braking zone and floating that speed, transition that to turn 11 as well. You're gonna turn in pretty early and this is our last quote unquote early apex where you're gonna apex right where the curb starts uh, it's right about here, so you can see it's almost geometrically centered to the corner, but it feels like a very early apex, and as soon as you get the left front tire to that curb without hitting the curb, you can start to let the car track out towards the carousel. 
I find the biggest mistake people make is they try to slow too much for turn 11 rather than letting the car track out to the right. They try to do a later apex and not use all the momentum that they could through turn 11. So really trust that your minimum speeds in turn 11 need to be similar to turn one and float that speed. Now coming up to the final corner on the track, the carousel. Also similar to the keyhole where we have kind of a double apex. So we have the car on the full right side of the track. There's a curb on your right and as soon as that curb ends, that's a great braking reference point. Uh, most cars can brake either at or maybe even just a little after that curb ending. But we're gonna keep the car all the way against the right side grass up until a crest right about here where the car starts to fall away from the track just a little bit. And as soon as you fall over that crest, you can let the car track out, maybe a half a car width, full car width if you need it, but back to a late apex right about here at the exit of the carousel. And your reference point for that is a really big bump where the track has shifted. If you hit it, you've hit the apex perfectly, but in a lower speed car, you're already on power, kind of bounces the car and you can stay flat out through turn 13. In a higher power car, you'll probably have to stay off throttle and go for a more exaggerated late apex until you just clear that bump. The last thing is the more curb you can use on the inside of turn 12, the less that bump affects the car. So feel free to climb the curbs here at that late apex in the carousel. As long as you've hit that bump correctly and you got yourself set up, you should be able to stay flat out through turn 13 and you'll get to that start finish line real quick. So you wanna get through the carousel on your flying lap as quickly as you can to trip the timer. So hopping on board to our in-car video, uh, this is a 2016 Scion FRS, uh, stock power, so probably not even 200 horse to the wheels, uh, on Hoosier race tires and a little bit of aero. So this is uh, the epitome of a momentum car uh, that you'll see at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. We also have an in-car video of a C6 Z06 Corvette with no aero that we're going to link in the description so you can see the differences uh, in how I drive a higher horsepower car versus a momentum car here at Mid-Ohio. So coming onto the front straightaway to start a lap, the car will naturally come out to the right side of the track here. You've got a couple of reference points and our turn-in point is just before the bridge. You'll hear very little braking and almost straight back to some maintenance power, apexing there when the curb starts but washing away pretty early. There's a little bit of that terrain that catches the car and this lap is gonna be of the club course. So we're flat out into the chicane. As soon as my hands go straight, we're braking, throwing the car through this corner, carrying our speed that'll track us out to the right. There's our first apex track out maybe half a car width and then we'll get back to this second apex. There's a little bit of new pavement there as of 2021 that makes the uh, most cars push for just a little bit so you have to make sure that you're going to make the exit of that corner. So we'll cut a little distance out of the back straightaway by moving over to the right side of the track before getting back left for the braking zone at turn four and coming into the S's things get real busy. So again the goal is to float your speed through turn four as fast as you possibly can. You'll see the momentum of the car naturally carries me out to the left side of the track. As soon as my hands are straight, I brake and turn in, cut the distance out of the entry to turn five, and then we're gonna take a quick pause so I can point out a couple of reference points. So as you saw, I cut a lot of distance out of turn five, tracked out just a little bit past center track, and now I'm hustling the car back to the left for turn six, where we have a bit of sealer that helps us reference where the car needs to be placed. So again, here is a very light brake just to set the weight on the front axle to get the car to turn in at the bottom of the hill. We want our right sides just to the inside of that dark sealer where it starts. You should have already turned in when it starts and, uh, and keep the tires on the inside of that. Get down to the curb. This is a momentum car, so we're gonna be on power track all the way to the left. Note the quick hands, really quick steering inputs to get flat out here, straight line between the curbs at seven and eight, and then a decreasing radius. You'll see my hands position doesn't change much, but a really early apex at turn nine hands straight over the crest and tracking out with a ton of momentum into Thunder Valley. So now we'll get the car all the way to the right, a quick break and float your speed into turn 11, early apexing right where the curb starts, then tracking out. Keep the car on the right side of the track, right there where the curb ends is a great braking point. And then here through the middle of the carousel, we'll let the car track out back down to the curb. There's the bump that we talked about as our apex point and flat out back onto the front straightaway. So that brings us to our scores for Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. So we're gonna start with our fun factor. I'm gonna give it an eight on fun factor. Uh, there's a couple of really fun sections. It's a couple of buzz kill sections if you don't have the power to get out of some of the slower corners. So it's not a 10 out of 10, but uh, especially the S's, turn one is really fast, turn 11's really fast. Uh, those are really, really fun. Next up is risk. Uh, it's not an entirely safe track. There's a couple spots that can bite you. So I'm gonna give it a seven on the risk factor. Uh, and the key here is just knowing your spots. There's a couple of spots that if you spin right, you're into a wall. If you spin left, you're into a field. So making sure that you end up where you don't want to hit a wall. But uh, it is certainly a little bit of a risky track, especially in a rain, which is uh, a whole video in itself. So that brings us to technicality. I'm going to give that an eight as well. 
This is one of the tracks uh, in North America that has a lot of corners that link together. And I find that anytime you have those big sequences of corners are when you introduce a lot of technicality that people aren't used to versus a track maybe like Road America where you have a corner, straight away, corner, straight away. That gives you opportunities to reset where here at Mid-Ohio, if you mess up in turn four or five, the consequences compound through turns seven, eight, nine. Uh, it takes a while to get to one of those reset points. And finally, my overall score, gonna give it an eight. Not gonna lie, it's not my absolute favorite track to drive, but I've been going here since I was two years old. It's where I fell in love with racing, so I'm gonna jack it up a little bit there for that overall score of an eight. And uh, I absolutely love coming to this place. It's my, my home away from home. So those are our tips and tricks for Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Obviously, this is a very high level view of how to drive Mid-Ohio, but if you wanna get more in depth, we offer professional coaching services here at ASM. So visit the ASM website, uh, get in touch with us, and we can obviously go way more in depth face to face with you uh, if you grab us at the track or you get in touch with us for some coaching services. So uh, good luck at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. I hope to see you at the track soon.